figures from the Marvel Legends line are a bit like buses. You don't see any for ages and then suddenly two turn up at once, as was the case with both Ulic and of course the Rhino. The first thing you'll notice about this deluxe release of the Rhino though is that he is in the retro Spider-Man line. That is to say that he's been released in the retro toy biz packaging of the Spider-Man animated series all the way back from the 1990s. And if you've seen any of my other reviews looking at any of the figures in this subline, then you'll know I'm a huge fan of this approach. I love the nostalgia, I love this card art, and I just think it works really, really nicely in this oversized packaging. And certainly, the deluxe figures that have been released in this line, such as the Kingpin previously, are massively oversized to accommodate the large builder figure that is contained within. So straight away, the packaging for me is a real winner. I've always had great affection for this packaging. I love the colours, the purple and the yellow and the orange. It all works together very, very nicely. It looks really presentable. You can stick this on your wall through the peg hole. You can put it on display in a cabinet. It's always going to look really visually striking. And if you do have fond memories from the 1990s being a kid like myself, then this is always going to rekindle those really fond memories. And how does this compare to the original release from the 1990s? Well, they've copied the card art pretty much identically. The only thing that's missing is the yellow outline behind the action figure. And the frame of the billboard seems to be an orange rather than the green. But other than that, it's pretty much identical, only scaled up. Even the image of the rhino charging it from the billboard looks to be pretty much the same image. I think they've done a really lovely job of this. Meanwhile, on the reverse, we have that image of the Rhino again charging towards us. We have a little bit of bio at the top of the packaging there. And then we have underneath the old style reel of other action figures you can pick up in this wave. And I did review each of these in a separate video not too long ago. Now, before we look at the action figure himself, I did want to point out that this is essentially a re-release of a previous builder figure, as is so often the case with these deluxe figures. But as usual, there are a couple of tweaks, so it's not the exact same figure. So I wanted to point out both the darker paint taps that are on this figure, the strange alternate head with the open yelling mouth, and the curved shoulder pads. The figure himself is a bit of a beast. First impressions are everything and they're very, very strong here. This is a really powerfully built figure and he looks absolutely spot on. He does come with two head sculpts and they both look to be brand new sculpts to my eyes. And I would say that both are an improvement over the original. The expression on the face is a lot more realistic and less exaggerated as the previous release and I think it looks much more true to character. I think this is a really good look. And of course, for those who already have the previous Builder figure, you have the option of swapping out the heads and using them on this figure as well. So ultimately, you'll actually have four heads you could use. But I'm a big fan of this sculpt. I love all the detailing, the little creases in the neck, the little small eye that we see in the side of the head, the horn with the different paint apps there, the sort of base brown, then the lighter beige color of the tip of the horn. Looks really good, a lot more realistic. It just gives it a bit more texture, which is nice. And there's a nice paint wash running over this figure, all over, in fact. Even on the body, we can see there's the base gray plastic, but then there's an actual darker paint wash running over it in key parts to highlight the muscle groups and certain details details in the sculpt which is absolutely fantastic and I think all in all this is really good. Now there may be some parts here particularly the arms and legs that will be familiar to Marvel Legends collectors who have seen these previously. Certainly these were used on the Ulic or Ulic at uh, the Troll figure as well and I think they've been on a few others of the more recent builder figures that we've seen but I think it works really well here. This definitely looks like the Rhino hide <laughs> that you'd expect to see from this costume and it's wonderfully painted so it's it works really really well. It looks really authentic and I'm really really happy with it. There's no real surprises when it comes to the articulation scheme. It is the standard Marvel Legends scheme that we've seen before many, many times, which is pretty fantastic. There's a ball joint in the head, allowing the head to turn from side to side and look up and down. Now, it's a little bit more restricted because of those huge shoulders that he has there. So when he looks from side to side, that's okay, but he can't get his head 360 degrees. He can't look backwards, but then, hey, he's going to put him in that position anyway. So this works perfectly well for me. He does have 
ball joints in the shoulders. Again, there is a little bit of compromise here to how high he can get his shoulders up uh, because of those uh, big arching shoulders that he has there. So this is probably as high as you're going to get them. But he does have a bicep swivel, which goes all the way around. He has a single joint at the elbow, so he can bend his arm to roughly 90 degrees there. And then he has a pin swivel at the wrist. So of course, he can rotate his wrist 360 degrees and he can bend it forwards and backwards. He's also got a swivel at the waist so he can spin from side to side and there's also an ab crunch meaning he can bend forward. Sadly he can't bend back too far but he does bend forwards a good distance. There's ball joints in the hips allowing the legs to kick out to the side. This is supported by an upper thigh swivel as well so he can rotate his upper leg all the way around if you want him to and of course the legs kick forwards and they kick backwards a little bit, back, back to the starting position really. There's another single joint at the knee so he can bend his leg to 90 degrees and then there is an ankle pivot so he can turn his foot from side to side, it can hinge forwards and backwards. Now he also comes with a couple of accessories including an extra pair of open hands which is brand new of course because we didn't get these on the bath release, we just had those closed fists and we also get that alternate head I mentioned earlier. So how does he compare to previous releases? Well, here he is standing next to the Toy Biz Rhino from the Sinister Six gift set from a few years ago. I always really, really loved this version of the Rhino. I think it was an excellent figure, one of Toy Biz's best releases. I think they did a really nice job of the paint apps and the detailing on the skin. But you can see here that this new release is ever so slightly taller and broader than that release. And now here he is next to another favorite figure of mine, the Rhino from Marvel Select. This was an absolutely fantastic figure in its own right. I love so much about this figure, but we can see here that obviously he is in a much bigger scale. He's in that seven inch scale. So again, he appropriately towers above this Marvel Legends six inch scale figure. But I have to say, I think all three of these figures are actually winners. Each one has its own pros and cons, but I don't think that any of them are bad. And I think they're all actually very, very good. So, final thoughts from me then. Well, it's probably no surprise to say that I absolutely love this figure. And for me, he is a five-star release. I think everything about this figure is a winner. It's a great sculpt. He scales very nicely with the other Marvel Legends figures. There's a lot of detail on him, which is nice. There's some complimentary paint apps to really draw out some of that detail. I think the head sculpts are really, really welcome, very nicely done. Less cartoonish than the previous release and much more grounded, which is fantastic. I love that he comes with open hands this time around as well. So we have some different options for display. And I think he looks really, really good. Good. The articulation works really well, the packaging is really colourful and fun in its own right and displays very very nicely and I really can't find anything to fault it. If you enjoyed this video please do give it a like and remember to subscribe as there will be plenty more videos soon.